buy low and sell high, that's a good way to die. So let's take a look at an IPO. And IPOs are great because a lot of times day one sets the high for the entire history of the IPO. And that's factored into my IPO course and factored in my IPO trading and pack patterns like buy at B. And that's why you wait at least to the close of day five before looking to enter. So it's pretty low down here at what's that two? That's over 50% lower than it was a couple of days ago. So that's pretty cheap. And then it drops even more. So that's more of a bargain. And then even more of a bargain down here, less than a buck, less than 50 cents. Now you might be thinking, okay, Big Dave, that's some shitty stock you picked. And I did, I did, I just grabbed it last minute. I knew IPOs would be a good place to look. And by the way, if all you pick up tonight is don't buy any IPO to the close of day five, you're welcome. So let's take a look at NASDAQ Composites. When it was down 50% in 2000, it sure seemed like a bargain. And then it dropped another 60%. As I've said quite a bit, I was overseas once at a speaking engagement and the guy before me got up and said, whenever a market is down 50%, you want to sell puts. And I'm thinking, oh my God, that'll work until it don't. Yeah, Warren Buffett did that exact thing on one of the, one of the market bottoms. What was the market bottom when the S&P bottomed at 666? And it worked out nicely for Mr. Buffett, but the market could have kept on dropping and he had unlimited exposure with that position. And, you know, he's Mr. Cherry Coke, a cheeseburger, and I buy things of value, whatever. Well, selling options naked, is that is that really a, a value kind of cheeseburger or Cherry Coke play? I, I don't know. Doesn't sound like it. I'm being facetious. The facetious flag is flying. <laughs> now, one thing you have to remember is the only way to profit from a trade is to capture a trend. You have to sell higher than you buy. Not buy low, sell high, sell higher than you buy. So if you buy at point A and sell at point B, your profit obviously, duh, implied, is B minus A. Well, from A to B is a trend. You have to catch a trend to profit on a trade. So never forget that. So if you're plotting your 15th oscillator or you're trying to determine if the wave counts is a fifth of a third or a third of a fifth or whatever, however it works. I don't know if that's even how it works. I used to years ago. <laughs> I, had a, I, had a, I had a book which I gave away. I gave away all my books. I don't know why I still have so many, but I gave away like almost every book that I had on, on technical analysis and all because a lot of that stuff is just fluff and I don't believe in it. But I had a book it was called Elliott Wave Explained and I'm buddy of mine who was a uh, <laughs> long story it's a long story with him but he he's he's the guy i talk about that ended up a doorstep after round tripping five grand into about a million back to five grand or less blew his account up and uh anyway so he sits down with a with a glass of wine or a whiskey or whatever he drinks and uh, he grabbed that El elliot wave explained book off my shelf and he sits down to, to read it underneath the read you know underneath the lamp the reading chair and he starts reading it and he's like what the hell is this and he looks at the title he thought it was everyday wine explained but anyway that's a long run for a short slide but <laughs> it just reminded me of that so the bottom line is you have to ask yourself is it in an obvious trend and if so how do i get in so that's the you know next to is the universe friendly which mr einstein posed that's the most important question we need to ask the other question you need to ask is is the market whatever the market you're trading in an obvious trend and if so how do you get in well in my case that would be a pullback 